Hi, I'm Baron Dixon. Welcome to Freehand Photoshop Fun. Today I'll be making a skull from the id. <laughs> I like to make little monsters now and then. This is a fun way to do it. Sometimes I'm just in the mood to doodle, and I usually doodle a, a skull or something like that. This time I'm doing a weird monster alien skull. Using the dodge tool over a canvas of splotches of very dark color, I uh, start sketching in my creature. Now I'm not working from any kind of uh, preliminary sketch or anything. I just had the idea that I want to make some kind of monster skull and profile. And I just start scribbling away. I just have my uh, mouse button down all the way as I just dance around and, uh, and uh, just pick up bits of uh, dark color and lightening it and that's what gives it some nice color variation in there so I'm not just doing black and white. You could do this with the dodge tool over a very very dark gray like just almost black and you could colorize it later. I think it's more fun to work this way and just let some of those colors kind of work in there. Another thing that's nice about this technique is many of the details just work themselves into the process. You don't have to spend a lot of time concentrating on making minuscule details. Uh, with this technique, a lot of the details just pop up on their own. Stuff you couldn't really make up if you wanted to. So you can see in a very short period of time, uh, I've basically roughed out the, uh, the sketch of my creature. I'm, I've uh, gone to a more sharper edge brush. This is actually a stipple point brush, but I'm still using the dodge tool. And uh, I'm creating more uh, hard-edged highlights to the sketch. Defining teeth and the, the jaws and things like that. And giving some dimension to the spine, the neck spine there. Oh, I should point out to you that um, this video is actually running in double time, so what you're seeing here is happening twice as fast as would be in real time, but it keeps the running time under 10 minutes and keeps you from getting too bored, hopefully. With a, a wider brush in the dodge tool, I'm lightening up the, uh, the skull some more, bringing it a little more out into the light, defining it, making it more, more solid against the background and uh, makes it uh, pop a little more. Yep. And now I've switched to the burn tool which darkens things and I'm adding you know, shadow details now to the, th to the thing, even kind of whittling with it, adding shadow into the dark, into the light parts and whittling into them to give them some, get rid of some, to trim it back without having to do any erasing or anything. With a smaller brush using the burn tool, I'm uh, adding more uh, dark shadow details, finer details to things like the teeth here. And, uh, sharpening the edges of some things even more, adding some uh, piping, giving it that biomechanical look. Those of you who are familiar with the artist H.R. Giger know uh, where I'm getting my stylistic inspiration from. And he works pretty much the same way. He would do this with an airbrush, but he would just improvise. He'd just work from his id and, um, and then just load things with lots of detail. And I find that's a fun way to work. It's very spontaneous. And yet you can do things that are that are very impressive, um, and I've just kept doing it throughout the years using different mediums. Finally, the computer. So um, as you can see, I'm carving a little more. I'm using a blur tool now to uh, soften what I just did. The blurs. I think it's a smudge tool. And uh, hitting it with the dodge tool again in a very wide brush to uh, brighten things up. I wanted to see that background some more because I wanted to use the smudge tool to swirl it a bit. Differentiate it from the bones there. 
also manipulate the, the skull a little bit more. Smooth out some of the details so it doesn't look so drawn. Okay, with the uh, burn tool again at a small five point uh, brush size, I'm just adding more uh, detailing. I'm looking at like dark areas in the white, in the bones and all that, and seeing things that look like mm, dark areas and darkening them even further to create all these details. They don't have to be accurate, they just gotta, you, but you do this stuff and it does make it look real, it makes it look a lot more impressive than it, than it actually is. Just going in and making these little details, they they add a decorative uh, look to it. They add pattern. Mine, get some cracks there on the bottom of the skull there. Probably get some going there. But oh yeah, using the uh, smudge tool again at 100%. I'm uh, tweaking the the neck slash spine a little more, giving it more size and dimension. You see me tweaking the skull. I was never really completely happy with that jaw when I was doing it, so I, I find myself tweaking it a lot. Making the eye sockets a little more expressive. With even a bigger one, it's like I can move whole chunks of the skull around so I can uh, actually reshape it somewhat. You can see how I'm giving him a bigger dome, you know, more skull. Moving the eyes forward. The profile, so that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Going in with it. You can see just how it's very intuitive. I just go in and adding some more dark stuff in the shadows to enhance more designs and details into it. And I'm adding a little ventilation to the skull. Um, a repetitive pattern, that's always a common thing in the, the Giger style of artwork. Those of you who are taggers, you'll find this is a lot like uh, like tagging. If you if you improvise with spray cans on a wall, this is very similar to that. It's a very loose, freeing way to work. So now I think I'm setting myself. I've set myself up a new layer, and it's in um, it's in overlay mode, which you can't see. And I've put a neutral gray on there, and I'm applying a sponge filter, an artistic sponge filter, because I want to jump this up a little bit. Applying a little bit of a Gaussian blur to soften it so it's not that detailed. And you can see it kind of antiques the painting a bit. I've now added a layer in multiply mode and putting a very light translucent glaze of yellowish gold on there. And with yet another layer in overlay mode, I'm, I'm adding some dark red so it looks kind of like blood stains. And I want to break it up a little, so with the eraser I'm just kind of hacking through it real quick and dirty. It doesn't have to be very neat, because then I'm going to apply a Gaussian Blur. That's a blur you can you can adjust the intensity of it as you go. This one enough to where it looks kind of bloodstained. Maybe some jackals or whatever just came in and freshly ate all the meat off these bones, and this is what's left. And then just tweaking the light dark again with the dodge and the burn tools. Bring the skull out a little more, you'll see me darken it again. The video really doesn't do the original picture justice, but you get the idea. What you ought to do, this is almost over, is you should uh, put it on pause and take the playhead and scrub it back and forth from the beginning to the end of the video so you can see this thing evolve even faster, you know, through the timeline. I do that sometimes. It's a fine up. photo montage, it's boring. I can get through it quick that way. And there you go, there's your, the completed thing. It doesn't have to look like a photograph, it doesn't have to look real, it just has to look real cool. This could be the opening graphic for a movie. Speaking of which, this has been an Obscure Entertainment production. I'll see you next episode, where I'll make a kitty cat.